Hi everyone, it's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back. Today I want to show you how to finish off some simple kitchen towels. Lori Holt has brought to us these great panels and we've got them in stock in our Raleigh store right now and there are four kitchen towels to a panel and the way she has it is it's sectioned off so you have the full kitchen towel and then you have the days of the week. So if you would like to applique those on, she's given you um, Monday through Sunday so that you can do your own applique on your kitchen towel. So I thought it would be a fun thing to do to take a look at how we would finish off items like this with our baby lock. So today that we're going to be using our baby lock serger and we're going to be using a baby lock sewing machine. We're going to get started by taking your panel and you can pre-wash it if you'd like. I didn't have time and of course once I got my hands on it I wanted to go ahead and start sewing. So I have gone on and cut everything up. I have my panels cut apart and I've got my days of the week cut apart for your demo today. We're gonna to be using a three thread serge stitch. Um, Lori has told us to do a rolled hem on our sewing machine. So the instructions, just in case you wanna know, they are included on your panel. My way is just gonna be a little bit different um, because I know of a lot of us on sew machines and sergers and your sergers gives you a really fast, even quick, perfect finish. Um, we will be using our sewing machine also to do the top stitching. Now, I know that you may be thinking, can you just use the um, serger stitch as your regular edge and you most certainly can. This one we've just done a narrow little three thread overcast on and if you like that look this certainly will hold up in the wash. It'll hold up and it'll look great but you can see that edge so if that's not the, what you like we're going to lay an edge like this on our kitchen towel and then we're going to fold it back and top stitch it rather than using a rolled edge or a rolled edge foot on the machine. Um, the rolled edge foot and the feature is wonderful on your baby lock, but when we're doing something this small with four corners, it's a little bit challenging to turn those corners. If you're doing like taffeta, bridal wear, um, evening wear, those types of things, that's where your rolled edge traditional foot and method really come in nicely. But on cottons like this, it can be a little bit challenging. So what we've done today is, let me put these to the side. I'm gonna show you a few um, things that you might want to pull out, your notions that will aid you today. Aren't these so cute? There's four different ones. So as we're surging, the double-eyed needle, especially if you're gonna use um, your rolled edge only, you're gonna wanna hide that thread tail. So you're gonna wanna pull out that double-eyed needle, okay, to hide that thread tail. If your stitch is a little bit narrow, always remember that you can use just your larger, these are my doll needles is what I call them, okay? But we just wanna get that thread and hide it. You'll want your Karen K Buckley's. These scissors are wonderful because they grip the fabric when they cut. So every time I'm serging, I like to have these on hand because anytime you have fabric under your serger and you need to trim, you don't want that fabric to push. You want it to stay in place and clip up to the portion that needs to be clipped so your serger can do the rest of the trim work. So these are the ones that I recommend are the Karen K Buckley. I think today I'm gonna to be using these, same serrated edge, but I'm using, so make sure you've got that. Um, this is a product by Clover. It's called the Press Perfect, and it really does press perfect. So if you feel comfortable just rolling your edges and pressing before we do our top stitch, that's perfectly fine. But if you have one of these on hand, this would be the time to use it. You can see that what it does is you just use your iron, put, your fab put it on top of your fabric, and roll your hem right up on it. So it works great for the project today, but of course it always works great on other things too. Garments, any of your home deck projects where you've got to get that nice edge like that. So those are the things that we'll be using. Make sure you've got some nice sharp pins to penetrate through your fabric as well. That just makes your job a little bit easier. Now, before we go any further, I have set my baby lock serger up for three threads. So I have one needle in, my right needle only took my left needle out, which is automatically going to narrow down my stitch, remember. Um, go ahead and set your tensions where you need to have them. This one is set up for the three thread rolled. Let me show you here. And so that's what this stitch looks like, which is perfect for my project today. So I will tell you my settings on my Celebrate. If your model is a little bit different, 
then I always recommend set it up the way that baby lock is asked and then you can mess with and tweak your stitch just a bit if you don't if it doesn't satisfy you you know because different fabrics are woven different as long as and the weight is different this is a little bit different from a regular quilters cotton this is a nice weight cotton for kitchen towels so today my celebrate again left needle out i have my width set at a 5.5 or 3.0 you know on your baby lock it has both of those on there. Let me just say that if you're not sure why it is they have both of those listed together when the numbers are hugely different, um, different, what it means is if I have it on the 5.5 and I have my left needle in, then that's gonna give me a width of 5.5. But if I have my left needle out and right needle only in, then my width is gonna be 3.0, okay? So that's what I'm going for on this. I have selected my rolled edge stitch on my machine and I've put my stitch length on about a one and a half. I do have my blade unlocked because I wanna trim. I always think that if you'll trim your fabric just slightly, you get a better stitch as it's coming out of the machine. We of course won't need differential feed or anything like that. So we've got our width set 3.0. We've got our length set at about a 1.5 on a rolled edge and we're ready to go ahead and start. So I'm just gonna pull one out here and you'll see that, you'll see this line, that's your cutting line that Lori's given you on each panel. And I have already cut mine off. And remember I said, we're gonna trim slightly. So I'm gonna probably trim that right off. And there is pattern, there's a stopping point on this. You can see that the fabric is printed right up about um, a little over a quarter of an inch, but not quite half an inch to the edge, which is gonna make this a perfect project for me. Um, today, I'm going to be turning my corners and pulling back on my thread. That's the method that I'm going to use. This is not something I normally show, so this will be something new for you. So just watch me closely. It's a real simple method, and I'll show you and explain to you why we're going to do that. You know, I always like to lift my foot up slightly and get that fabric started under there so that the machine's got something to bite on. And we're going to go ahead and serge. everything nicely so you can see and as I approach my corner here I want to stitch right up to the end and then I want to take one stitch in my fabric and stop so I'm coming up slowly and at this point I'm turning my hand wheel and I've taken my last stitch you want to bring your needle to the upright position and what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna tug on this fabric slightly. Now, when I do, it's gonna give me more threads than I normally would have if I did not tug and allow me to turn my corner so that the thread wraps around the fabric, but it doesn't pull the corner in. It gives you a nice crisp corner. So I'm gonna lift my foot up and just tug it slightly. I'm gonna get this turned around and positioned underneath the foot of my machine, right on the corner. Now at this point, what I have is a few extra thread threads in there. If I go ahead and stitch, those threads are gonna remain in that corner and you're gonna have a little bit of an eyelash there. So we're gonna do a pullback method. You're just gonna simply tug on your threads. That came back about two inches. This didn't come back much at all. My lower looper didn't come back much at all. My needle came back about two inches. Now what I've done is I've made sure that my threads are not gonna be in the way. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim again and I'm gonna treat each corner like this. As I approach this corner, I'm gonna just, I don't need this thread tail. If you were allowing this to be your finished edge, then this is when we would take our double-eyed needle and we'd grab that thread tail that's coming off and we would feed it back into our stitches. That would secure this hand towel so that you can use it year after year in your kitchen. We're gonna just stitch off and completely trim that beginning trail. 
and I'm just going to clip it right at the end right here. Now this is actually ready for me to go ahead and take my perfect press, fold that up a quarter of an inch and just give a nice crease on there. And you'll find that once you've surged your edge like this and given it the finish, it really rolls back very nicely and easily. And when you get ready to put it on your perfect press, which is a little bit raised, it gives a perfect crease in there so that when you get ready to go to your machine and top stitch, you don't have to pin nearly as much as you normally would if you didn't do this method. So I've got this one ready and I'm gonna go to my iron and I'm gonna take my perfect press and I'm go ahead and press everything in the back and then we're going to go to the sewing machine. So I'll meet you back at my sewing machine. Here you are back at the machine and if you remember this was the towel that I showed you as we began that had the simple rolled edge on it and I have already done all four corners and I've taken my thread tail and I've hidden it in my seam at the corner and I told you about that and told you about the products but I thought well if you've never seen that done let's just take a quick look at that before we go to the sewing machine portion. So the way that works is when you surge off your corners, um, these corners we did the pullback method on and you can see how nice they turned out. All, they don't have that extra thread in there, but you'll have a thread tail at the end, okay? And what you wanna do is thread that thread tail through your double-eyed needle. Um, I'm using my tapestry needle. That's just what I had open. Either one is just fine. This one's a little harder to use because it does have a point on it and your double-eyed needle does not, it's designed rounded so that it'll go easily through your hem there, okay? And I'm gonna just take this and go right up under my stitches here. And you only need to do about an inch or so, and then you can just come right out through and you can see what's going to happen is it begins to drag that tail right through the stitches and it gets buried in there and because it is see how nice that finish is because it's buried it's not going to get pulled out you can wash it time and time again and the stitch is beautiful it's perfect it's going to really hold up nicely so once this is done you're able to use this towel but i'm going to actually use this towel folded back and i'm going to top stitch so that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do next. We will take and look a take a look at feet real quick because you know you've got some feet with your baby lock that might make this a little bit easier to do. I've prepared my edges with my best press and my perfect press. And so you can see I've got a really nice crease on there. And that's what I want you to give yourself because if you have it pressed up nice, um, faultless starch too is another thing you could probably use. That'll work out just fine. But once it's pressed up nice like that, it just it handles better once it gets to your machine. Now you can certainly use your regular straight stitch foot for this, but your machine comes with something called an R foot, which is a blind hem foot. And when you select your blind hem on your baby lock, it's gonna call for the R. If you snap this foot on, you'll see that it has a guide. The guide is designed so that when you do your blind hem fold in your fabrics, that fold would fit right up against this edge and give, drop your stitch just at the perfect spot so that it's blind. But you can do this with your straight stitch also. Let me show you how this works. You just line it right up under your machine and select stitch number one, which is gonna give you a far left needle stitch. And you can dive right down in the fabric and then you're ready to go. So as you begin to sew, you'll see that we'll approach the corner. I've got it pinned here where we've gone on and used our pressing tool and we've got both edges pressed nicely and the corner turned and I've just put a pin there. I've put one in all my corners for me like this, okay? and so that when we get ready to sew, we can just stitch right down this. Now, if you've ever been in class with me before, you know that another thing I like to use is my open toe um, applique foot. And the reason that I like this also is if you need to get a deeper hem than what your R foot will allow you to have, then the open toe foot will allow you to go further to the left. And when you put this foot on, and either one of these will work fine. When you put this one on, I'll allow the right arm 
of the foot to hang off the fabric. And guess what? That's going to be very similar to the guide that's on your R foot. If you let that foot just hang off right off the edge of the cut fold here. Now you'll see that this time my needle is way further to the left with this one. So with your width adjustment on your baby lock, you can move your needle position and get that stitch right where you want it. And I'm going to use my open toe applique foot today and I'm going to set my width on about a one or a one and a half. And when you get ready to test yours, you'll just drop your needle in there and take a look at it and see what's best for you. Um, so you can use your R foot, of course, with the guide that's on there. If you feel more comfortable with that, I'm gonna stick that one away out of the machine. And let's go ahead and run our straight stitch. You can start at any point. And when I come to the corners, I'm gonna drop my needle and pivot, and I'll show you that. reach the end again and so rather than back tacking I like to just stitch a couple inches over my previous stitches and that's going to lock everything in look how nice that corner is so each corner is already finished off you've got all your top stitching done all the way around and if you'll notice I've got an extra little treat on this one the um, days of the week remember I told you they come with your panel and what I've done with this one is the same method as I showed you with the edge here. I've taken everything, cut it out nicely. I've used my press perfect to make sure that my corners and my edges come out nice every single time. So I've done that before we got to the machine. So what I'm gonna do now is just move from the edge right to applique in the weak patch on there, okay? So let's come and sew over a few inches cut that thread and you'll see that I've done minimal pinning on this when you use that the press aid like that everything's nice and crisp so I've put in, I've put four in my corners here and those are not pinned to my fabric itself only pinned to the patch to make sure that my corners are staying nice and crisp as I approach those and I've placed two pins here I laid it out on my rotary mat and just measured everything nice to make sure that I've got it centered. Now, this would be a great time if you wanted to use a decorative stitch or a different colored thread maybe to put on here, or maybe you wanted to use that hand-sewn stitch that's built into your machine. You can use whatever you'd like. You can zigzag this on, whatever you wanna do. For me, mm, on this one, I think I'm just gonna use a regular top stitch for our store sample. So. You can start at any point. Let's go ahead. I'm gonna just drop it right at the bottom here. Again, I'm staying with my um, open toe applique foot. I hope visually you can see really well with that. Um, this time I'm gonna move my needle to the right because I don't need it quite so far to the left. So with my width key again, you'll be able to see my needle move and scoot. And I usually lower my hand wheel and I'm right on the edge, which I think gives the nicest stitch. So let's go ahead and stitch that on. here I'm just going to stitch over this a little bit cut that thread and just as easy as that you have completely done a custom Lori Holt kitchen towel for your home so I hope you'll swing by our Raleigh store Maddie has these in stock 
and use your baby locks to the fullest. We'd love to hear from you if there's something specific you'd like us to shoot a video on, uh, maybe a foot or a technique, so let us know. And I hope you just have fun with this. Maybe there's something that you picked up from the surging methods today or the sewing machine that's gonna make your life a little bit easier. We love our baby locks. I thank you so much for watching. It's Kim from Carolina Sewing Back.